In this episode of the Motor City Hypnotist podcast, we are finishing up with my interview with my special guest, Kelly von Heidenkampf, talking about hypnosis, NLP, and who knows what else will come up. LP. So, sounds interesting. NLP. 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 Ah, got it. <laughs> well, record? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. The, the fuck are you <laughs> I have no going? idea. I don't either. I'm just pushing buttons, man. <laughs> hey, get there, folks. We will be right back. Get ready for the Motor City Hypnotist, <laughs> David R. Wright, originating from the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. He has hypnotized thousands of people from all over the United States. David R. Wright has been featured on news outlets all across the country and is the clinical director of an outpatient mental health and hypnosis clinic located just south of Detroit, where he helps people daily using the power of hypnosis. Welcome, the Motor City Hypnotist, David R. Wright. What is going on, people? It's David Wright, and we are back with another episode of the Motor City Hypnotist podcast. We are here for those watching on Facebook Live. We're here live in the podcast Detroit, Northville Studios. Always happy to have you. Matt is here with me. I'm just pushing your buttons. You man. are just pushing my buttons. I do it really well, too. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> can't um, wait to crack me over the head one of these days. <laughs> oh, good for you. So, yes, we're here. We're, we're live for those of you on Facebook, those of you listening later on the uh, audio. I appreciate it. Thanks for checking in. Let me tell you where you can find me. Uh, my website is MotorCityHypnotist.com. On the website, you'll find my podcast page along with my shop and all kinds of other cool stuff. Um, in fact, if you've, if you've happened to have been in one of my shows in the past, gosh, years, <laughs> years back, um, check the website. There's probably a video of that show or very likely a video of that show out there. Mm. Uh, so take a look at that, um, and also the podcast page and the store with all of my MP3 downloads and all kinds of other good stuff. Fun. Join me on social media. My Facebook is Motor City Hypnotist. My YouTube is also Motor City Hypnotist. You'll find actually videos of the podcast on my YouTube channel as well. So if you want to watch it rather than just listen, you can see it as well. Mm. Uh, check that out. And on Twitter and Instagram, Motor City Hypno. And if you would like to contribute financially to the show, you can find me on Patreon. Patreon is a creator site where people can donate to their creators. It just helps them to continue to create what they like. And uh, also on there, you'll find there, there are a couple of different levels, very minimal monthly investment. Uh, but with those levels, I, I give stuff back to you like this, this coffee mug, which is a uh, I like that coffee mug. It, it is. It is actually uh, doubling as a different kind of mug this evening. <laughs> There's. It's flavored water. Just call it what it is. Yeah, it's it's kind of flavored water. <laughs> um, the other thing. Oh, I was I was just gonna look for something, and there it is. Coffee makes me a mite nervous when I drink it. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, it makes me a mite nervous. <laughs> so, so it is not coffee. So yeah, uh, check me out on Patreon, and as always, on every episode, I'm giving away my free hypnosis guide. That's a free PDF download for you. Just check in the show notes for that link. And also in the show notes will be the links for the other downloads that we have offered the last few shows. Uh, the free Hypnosis for Confidence download and also a link to the book, The End of Procrastination, How to Stop Postponing and Live a Fulfilled Life. Now, just be aware that that link, I'm an, I'm an affiliate on that. So if you use that link to buy that book, you don't pay any more, but I do get a, a little bit of that. So just to be transparent about that up front. Well done. Absolutely. It is time for our winner of the week. I'm so excited. That's how winning is done. <laughs> All right. This week's winner's name is Julia, and I'm not sure how to say her last name. It's K-O-C-H. It could be Cook, Cock, Coke, Coach. 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 Yeah. Kosh. Something like that. Right. A Michigan elementary school teacher is being praised for her quick thinking after she helped save the life of a student's grandmother while teaching remotely. Julia Coach. Koch was teaching her first graders remotely at Edgewood Elementary School in Muskegon Heights late last month 
when one student began experiencing technical difficulties. Uh-oh. Her device was not charging, Coach said. To help get to the root of the issue, Coach called Cynthia Phillips, the student's grandmother, to solve the problem. And that's when she realized something was not right. When she started speaking, I could tell there was something wrong, Coach told Wood. I wasn't sure what was wrong, but there was something wrong. Koch quickly alerted school administrators who called 911. Uh, the grandmother was having a stroke. Mm. And the teacher was aware of it after she got online to try to straighten out the technical issue that something was off. Mm. So the teacher, again, got a hold of the school administrators who called 911. And that they got to the grandmother, uh, of course, got her to the hospital. And good. Yeah. Wow. So, so she just, it's, it's just that this is kind of one of those, um, if you, if you, if you believe in, in just being in the right place at the right time or destiny kind of thing, because mm-hmm. just happened that this girl was having a technical issue that day at that time that the teacher had to call home to get resolved. That's crazy. Yeah. Good for her though. Yeah. Thanks absolutely. for stepping up. Just you know, for being aware. Yeah. And, 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 and again, taking quick action. So Julia Koch. Head on Coach a sw- Koch. Head on a swivel. Yes, Honestly. absolutely. <laughs> You're it. our winner of the week. That's how winning is done. Yes, sir. That is. So we are back with my special guest, Kelly von Heidenkampf, my good friend and fellow hypnotist. Mm-hmm. And, um, we, we, were, we were hitting on a couple of things last episode, and I just want to kind of cont- continue on because um, we hit on NLP a little bit. We hit on your integrative addiction solutions. Um, what I'd like to start with, and there was one other area that I, I don't think we've ever talked about that I, I, didn't, I wasn't aware until I looked into your website. I mean, I've seen your website before, but not completely, but the bulimia breakthrough method. Yeah. And, and how... Uh, I, I, what led what, what led you into that area, and and how does that? I honestly, how does it work, or how how do you approach that with with clients? So this is this is a really uh, sort of specialty program, and I got interested. Um, let me see. I think it was a it was just a Facebook group offering. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know that there's thousands of different hypnosis Facebook groups that you can belong to. Absolutely. And, um, one of them did sort of an introductory kind of thing into bulimia and using hypnosis for it. And the instructor who's had a great success and who has really come to specialize this in Canada um, using what she has trademarked as the bulimia breakthrough method. And her stories were just so fascinating about how are the, the current systems, first of all, cost so much money. They are so expensive to go to an in-treatment facility and that she found that you can actually break the the habit the addiction of of the bulimia fairly quickly and with hypnosis and then adding on coaching to kind of reinforce and 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 begin to build up this person cuz bulimia you know most of the time you're young you're a young girl when you begin to use bulimia yes you know the 12 to 15 range. And so she found that many of her clients that she was treating um, emotionally, even though they were in their thirties, forties, fifties, emotionally were that same 12, 13, 14, 15 year old girl. And so really going after the bulimia is very directed concentrated way so the program is three full days of just concentrated direct hypnosis to address the bulimia part of it and the rest of it is is done as a coaching program then 
to sort of meet the needs of that emotional intelligence that needs to be fostered, mm -hmm. needs to be developed, yep. needs to be cultivated and grown. So it's it's a fascinating protocol, and with with a high de with a high degree of success. Right. Well, and, and and I know that that a lot of eating disorders go either un checked or undiagnosed let's say because a, a lot of young people don't talk about it or their parents don't know yeah and and it's it's um i i have i have dealt with that here and there it's not something i deal with on a, on a, on a consistent basis yeah but but yeah definitely we have to address the emotional part of it it's it's not it's it's you can't just focus on the eating or not eating part of it that, that that's those are all symptoms of what they're feeling inside Absolutely. And a lot of times there's oh, there's a component, there's a relational component there too, many times between the daughter and the mother. Um, so lots of material to work with. Yes. For sure. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> and, yeah. And I think and, that's... But it, it is, it is. So I don't, I don't deal with uh, anorexia. And that was one of the things that we talked about in that certification process that anorexia really is a different animal mm -hmm. and many times requires medical expertise right when dealing with that yep but it is fascinating to have these other things sort of what what we call in our toolbox or in your toolbox to to kind of help different things with and we know because people have asked me and i'm sure you get these questions kelly all the time so what what, what do you use hypnosis for and honestly half the time i say everything I mean, really, you can apply it to anything and it can be Absolutely. helpful. Absolutely. And some of my favorites, so I, I, I should say that, you know, and, and this is probably true for you, where it, anxiety tends to always be a component no matter what the issue is. Yes. We are always addressing some level of anxiety, whether that's performance anxiety, anxiety in the forms of what do I do if I get cravings, the anxiety about, you know, am I good enough? Just all, anxiety in all shapes, ways, and form. And, you know, some of my favorite sessions are the sessions where, where people can't even really pinpoint what the problem is. They just feel stuck. Yep. They just feel stuck. And they don't know how to get out of that stuckness. Mm -hmm. it, there's a level of dissatisfaction, maybe unhappiness, whatever it is. And they, 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 they thought that they've been doing the thing that they've been taught to do to check all the boxes. You know, I, I've got the steady, secure job. You know, I'm married. I've got the kids. I went to school. You know, all the all the boxes that we check check off. And and yet there's this there's this dis satisfaction with their lives and yeah. those honestly are some of my favorite sessions to do with people yeah because because from the outside and and, and I, I i kind of express this to clients a lot you, you see what people want you to see and yeah. from the outside everything looks fantastic it looks like they're, they it's, it's i call it the social media life everything's perfect everything's great yeah. but you have yeah. no idea what's going on inside or when they're exactly. alone in a room by themselves what what those feelings are well and part of the the social media life requires you to constantly compare yourself to someone else yep there's a, there's a it, it, it's a constant competition it's a constant comparison of you know I'm, I, I'm not good enough and i should have this much money by now and i don't and yep. this and that and and you know the the surest way to kill joy in life is to start comparing yourself <laughs> boy that escalated quickly <laughs> I mean that really got out of hand fast. Yes, it does. Or in hand, well, one of the two. Well, yeah. I mean, it's but but you're right because if you look at and I always say I, I say this to clients. I say it to, I say it to everybody. I mean, people portray what they want you to see, and yeah. that's not reality. It, it's it's like it's like movies and TV, and and it, that that that's not real. I'm Batman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not real to some degree, but you know, I I I, I could say, but but it is real. It's just one part of their reality. It's mm. one part of their reality that they that they w wish to be more authentic about, right? And more genuine about, and more truthful about. So, yeah. Mm. So what what 
I, I guess in general, let's back up a little bit. I know we've, we've talked about a lot of areas that you work in, Kelly, but what, like what did you want to do this when you were like 10? Like what, what gets you into like hypnosis? Yeah, tell or, us or, about or your or childhood, Kelly. People. Let's, let's go I back. Was, when I was 16 in some business class in <laughs> high school, yeah. we had to take an inventory, a personal inventory, and then you'd get the feedback about what job would be perfect for you. The piece of crap and doesn't work. At, <laughs> at 16, I was told that I would be um, a really good di- director of a funeral home. Oh. <laughs> which no 16-year-old wants to hear. <laughs> What in blazes are you talking about? Well, no one's going to talk back at you anyways, so... Well, you kind of, like, do your own thing there, I guess. Yeah, you could. Now I know that I probably do have a really, really good skill set, but um, anyway, I didn't take that route, and (laughs) it was a couple of years ago, when my kids were getting older, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I tell you, David, you could have laid a million dollars on the table and said, okay... With your skill set and your gifts and talents and what you think your purpose is, you tell us the perfect job for you and we'll give you the million dollars. I would have had to walk away from that million dollars. I had no idea. Um, But again, I've always been fascinated with the power of the mind. Right. And I was directed kind of like, you know, you got to be open to those little pieces of information, just like that teacher was oh she had to call home and then she right. heard this grandma and, and talking. just aware and, aware of what was happening yeah, you yeah. have to be aware you yep. have to you have to be ready to take in information so i actually because i am i'm a really good wife and so my husband was having some sort of sleep issue and so i i signed him up for a hypnosis class and yep. thought okay he's german so if it, it's too airy fairy he'll be home within 10 minutes uh, it's gotta be good it's gotta be solid information and it was and he was fascinated by it he came home and yeah had all these papers with him and everything and i started looking through this stuff and i said that this is this is hypnosis i've been i've been i've been reading about this for years i can't believe this is hypnosis um so yeah that's how i got started i i called the lady up and i was like you know, to me <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> so you got the newsletter, and and that's what got you into it. Yeah, and so I signed up for uh, a certification class strictly out of personal interest, and um, just kept going and kept going, and finally dove off the high 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 dive and mm-hmm. opened up my private practice and found out that this was this is where I'm, what I'm really good at. So, so so in a sense that seeing it, seeing it successful drove you to, to have more interest in it. Like, like that was what, what really pushed you into it. Well, seeing the results, the results. Yes. And just because I had so much information that was aligning with what hypnosis is, but that information had never been labeled hypnosis. Mm. Um, You know, just for example, I belong to a spiritual home that, that practices affirmative prayer, right? Affirmative prayer and hypnosis are very closely related. (laughs) You know, it's the power of suggestion. Yes, Mm -hmm. It's using language. It's how you use language. It's paying attention to what's going on and, 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 really not even going further into trance, but awakening in that moment to understand that you've got the power to choose. So what are you going to choose? And and you mentioned that. And and again, it's all it's all, it's it's all this combination of meditation and guided imagery and, and the mental exercise. And it's, it, it, it becomes so less, um, I'm trying to think of a good word. So less scary when you realize the stuff that people are doing every day, anyway. Well, and also, you know, I mean, you know, you talk to a hypnot, you talk to any hypnotist. You know, when we get together in Vegas, and yeah. there's a thousand of us running around. We all understand 
that everything is hypnosis. Yeah. It's all a trance. Right. You get up in the morning and you have your get ready for work yep. trance. And yep. this is my trance before I have my coffee. And this is my trance after my coffee. This is my driving trance. Yep. This is me picking up the kids from school trance. So we just move from trance to trance to trance all throughout our day, dipping in and out of different levels of consciousness. And our minds are capable of taking on a suggestion at any level of conscious. You know, you don't have, we're capable of taking on suggestion in high levels of consciousness. Yep. We don't have to be, you know. Yeah, you don't have to be, yeah, half asleep. Right. No, no. You know, anybody, if you drive down the road and you see a police car pulled over on the side of the road, 99% of all people will take the the foot off the gas, hit the brake, or check their speed. They will do one of those three things or all three of them. A big-ass light bulb just just went off in my head as far as that trance that you're in. Uh Because everyone has their daily routine. They do A, Uh B, C when they wake up. And any deviation from A, B, and C is going to throw their day, their world into absolute chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that they'll, they'll just be off kilter or whatever you right. want to call it. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I was listening to somebody on NPR, an artist on NPR one day, and she was talking about how she deliberately does things different throughout her day to always c- kind of keep her mind um, agile. Ah. So she would do things like, you know, and we've all heard, you know, if you're right-handed, start brushing your teeth with your left-handed. But she, but she would also do things like start, she would walk from her bedroom to the kitchen backwards. Uh. <laughs> and just do weird little stuff like that just to, but but it, it is that kind of stuff that, that kind of keeps your mind I don't know, agile, yeah, flexible, yeah, or, or malleable. Yes, yeah. malleable. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That reminded me, and, and we've hit on this before. This has come up numerous times in this podcast in one form or another, but <clears throat> the movie Dead Poet Society. Yes. The whole idea of thinking for yourself and just not following the program. And there yeah. was a scene in there where they were all eating left-handed just to see how it would feel, or their opposite hand, whatever it was. Right. It was cut. It wasn't, it was, it's only on the extended version. And the part where they were in the courtyard walking, it's like, you have your own walk. You do whatever. It's yours. Yeah. You no, know, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. And the one guy was just standing and he says, you're not walking because I'm exercising my right not to. And he goes, that's my that's point. That's it. Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. So but, but also going against the grade is, it can be very, very scary too. Right. It, yes. Yes. Not we, falling in line. Not. Yes, not doing what you've always done. That, that for some people, that throws them off. That causes them anxiety. Totally. Yes. Yep. Totally. So it's um. But but think about this. Any anybody who's and I shouldn't say anybody. Probably most people who are or who are successful or, or have been successful, at some point took a risk. At yeah. some point, they had to make a decision that was scary to them. And absolutely, if they just you know, let. And I always fe- found it fascinating to think about how. We as adults, you know, just take for granted. We we take our kids to first day of kindergarten or a new daycare or summer camp or whatever, and we just kind of push them off. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll make friends fast. Just go do something new. But how often do we take our own advice and and put ourselves in in new situations that really challenge our current friend group or yeah. our current belief system or any of that? It's actually one of the reasons why I started doing the improv. Yeah, which, which is great. And, and I, hold that thought for just a sec, Kelly. I'm, I'm gonna, Craig popped in. I'm going to say hi. Hey, what's going, on, Craig? Craig's in my. Craig's. Uh, he's a friend of mine that we're in the same fantasy football league. So. <laughs> the, the fuck are you? <laughs> what are you doing? doing? There you dude. go, Craig. What, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> the, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so Kelly, let's get back because you mentioned improv, and and we've talked about this, you and I, many times. Yeah. How improv plays into just hypnosis and therapy in general and 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 even your own um, self-esteem. So go, go, tell me how you started and why you started in, in improv. Because I know Kelly just, I'll say it before she gets into it and then she can explain more. She's part of, she has been part of an improv group in her area. 
Yeah, so Minneapolis is a really, really great town for theater and improv. There's a ton of improv classes that you can take. And, and I really did. I'd always wanted to take an improv class and um, just decided to go for it. And took a, a, a whole slew of classes, level one, level two, until we there weren't any classes to take. And then the group that I was with, we... Um, we stopped and we hired a coach and then we kept meeting and we've performed. And then I went to a couple different theaters. So I've never, I'm not like a, I'm not like a professional performer or anything, but I'm, I'm an amateur and do it often enough that I, I trust to get up in any situation. And it, it's terrifying. Yeah, it, it is. It, it yes. is terrifying to go out on stage and to know that you have no idea what is going to come. Yep. Your pay. There's no and, script. And, there are no lines. There's no rehearsal. Right. Right. There's nothing. Nothing. Right. There's you and another person and 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 some fundamental rules that are it are there to keep the scene moving. Right. But you have to come with a willingness to just explore and be curious and to play and and to afford your other person mm -hmm. so you know that that rule the number one rule of improv of course is yes and so you can't deny anything that your partner's giving you yeah you, you can't, can't just turn it no down or say no right right you know one of the smartest people that i know in this in this entire world he's actually an improv teacher out of arizona and he's with the torch theater ah. and he actually has traveled around the globe teaching improv and it, it's just an amazing uh way that he goes about doing that i i really you know admire the gentleman because he's very good at his uh his craft oh that's awesome yeah yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. i think kelly may have dropped off a little uh, bit here it's just a, she'll be back in a second my oh, okay. apologies there oh no no worries here she that comes is. there she is for everyday life mm -hmm. yeah to be able to accept Everything that someone is giving to you to not negate it mm -hmm. doesn't mean you agree with it, but you're just acknowledging and taking that person's perspective on and saying, okay, I, 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 I accept that. I'm, I'm not going to negate that. I'm going to work with it. it. It's really a powerful skill builder and a whole lot of fun. Well, in the statement, you just said yes. And, 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 yeah. and yes, you, you just accept it and then you do what you want with it. Right. Yeah, but, that, but that's and this comes back that now if you just say yes, yes, and now you you can control what your own feelings and thoughts you you have it now you take right. ownership of it because yeah. I just made it up. And it, <laughs> it's probably the thing taking improv classes is probably the 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 number one thing that really made me a a, a good hypnotist. Yeah. Getting well, to that place where I can trust that what. I needed in the moment would be provided. Well, and I will say that it, it, I haven't taken classes, but because I've done a lot of stage work, yeah, it comes into play because it's oh, never yeah. going to go exactly how you expect it to go. Never. So you have to be able to do something. It doesn't matter if it's a mistake or not, right? You have to, you have to deal yeah. with it. Going back to that word yeah. malleable. Yeah, malleable. You, ha yep. you have to be malleable yep. and just be in the moment yep. and make that decision right then and there. Well, I know Kelly and I have talked numerous times about that. I've, I've been pushing her for years to go into stage and uh, she might be there soon because I, I think you'd be great. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be back. Yep. Just a, just a little internet issue here. <laughs> Technology is but, amazing. But, go but, on. But improv is it's, it's one of those things that just in your in your day to day life, it's it just teaches you just to accept what's there and then just do something with it mm -hmm. instead of trying to say no, no, or, or avoid it at mm -hmm. all at all costs. Yep. And there we are. That, yep. And something that like Kelly said, you know, you have to be in the moment. You have to yep. be you know, taking these improv classes made her a better hypnotist. Yes. 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 Because. Even even in the midst of a hypnosis session, you would think the the hypnotist is the one driving all the time, but that's not always the case. No, because some somebody might in the they they might want something different than them, what they thought they did, mm -hmm. and and you have to redirect that and go with it and get them to where they want to be or need right. to be. Right, go for it. You know, and it's interesting, David. You've probably had this too, where where you just get when you're in that space and in that moment, you get a piece of information that you work into the session yes. for whatever reason, and then afterwards, you know, the 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 client will say, "I can't believe you brought that up because it had this and this meaning." Uh huh. This is internet. 
Sorry, folks. Our, our internet is struggling. <laughs> it's struggling right now. This is a mess. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, but th- this is our improv. Something happened. Right. So, and, and we're just running with it right now. <laughs> so, Dave, give us the rundown where folks can find Kelly uh, on her socials. Yes. Uh, you're going to find Kelly. Oh, here we go, Kelly. Because I know we're, I, well, we're having a little internet issues here. I just said, hey, we have to improv right now. So, yeah. that, that works. This is a mess. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> so, we're getting close. But, Kelly, I want you to just, we'll end on improv, but I want you to give out information where people can find you. Because I want them, uh, here we go fun. again. Yeah. Go ahead, just go ahead and give it away. What happened? I'm going to leave the link for Kelly's website mm-hmm. in my show notes and also her social media uh, links. Uh, she's Here West we Metro. Hip- there we are. There we are, Kelly. We're t- I'm trying to get your info out before we crash for good. <laughs> so uh, uh, tell me, tell us your information. Ah, she just went oh, off. Oh, she just went off. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is, te- the, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> oh, great Odin's Raven. Put it in the show notes, my friend. What in blazes are you talking about? No idea. Great heavens. What kind of radio show is this? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, so, there she is. So we're talking about the improv. So, all right, okay, Kelly, quickly try to let's get your info out, and I'll make sure I have all in the show notes as well. Okay. So, Kelly, K-E-L-L-I at... WestMetroHypnosis.com, email 952-222-3975, WestMetroHypnosis.com is the website. The beauty of editing, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Awesome. Absolutely. The beauty of editing. So, Kelly, I'm going to thank you for coming on with me. I know we've been talking about this for years. I'm glad we got to do it for real this time instead of a fake one. But, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, um, everybody, thanks for checking in. We will be back next time and uh, we'll be talking about something hypnosis related I ho- I hope or she- mental health related or I'd, something good for you. I would love to hear more about Kelly and what she and the two of you just have a great dialogue together. I'd love to hear more. Oh, no, we, we the first day, the first time we met, we were in Vegas at um, uh, we were at Catherine's house, I think, weren't we? <laughs> Oh my God, that's right! Yeah, See, we, I need to hear this. We, we were at Catherine Hicklin's house. That was that was, and I'm jumping back, Matt. That's where I got my picture of in Kit. It was at Catherine Hicklin's house. Really? In the garage. Okay, that's, that's right. You that's the it. first time Kelly and, and I met. We, we both immediately went to the back row, <laughs> the very the, back row, in the back of the this lot. training. Yep. <laughs> and and it's it's like it's it's one of those things where like. We had, it feels like we've known each other for 20 years. But. That's great. Yeah. 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 The dialogue between the two of you. Yeah. I would love to have Kelly come back on the show with you. Oh, yeah. Sir. We'll have her back. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. In fact, maybe we'll come on and just do some improv for yeah. a half hour. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> cool, oh, Kelly. Improv on the internet. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want it out there? <laughs> yeah. This was fun. Boy. That escalated quickly. It really did. <laughs> All, right. All right, Kelly. Thanks for being with us. Folks, I will see you next time. Change your thinking, change your life, laugh hard, run fast, be kind. I will see you next time.